Hi, this is Layson Perkins, and I'm very excited and honored to be a part of this project uh, that's been put together uh, by Basketball Head. This is uh, uh, this is one that I've really looked forward to, uh, to to working on. And when I first started my deep dive into international basketball, one of the teams that I was uh, studying and watching a lot of film of was FC Barcelona. Uh, who was coached, or the team was coached at that, that time by uh, Javi Pascual. So uh, really, uh, really looking forward to getting into this breakdown here of some of his favorite horns actions. There's some 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 things here in this um, in this uh, video series that uh, I still have in my playbook that I I've stolen from Javi. So uh, let's uh, let's get into it here. We'll start with uh, the horns. Horns alignment, uh, very common alignment uh, used in international basketball. And we'll uh, look at this first set here, Horns 3. You know, obviously with, with Horns, having a, a player of the, the caliber of, uh, you know, Nick Kalathis being able to come off of a ball screen, you know, make that uh, pass to the uh, screener who is uh, cutting to the basket there is, uh, is important. And uh, that's a you know pretty common um, action, just your, your basic pick and roll action uh, that's run by uh, teams in Europe. You know, one of the things I, I like about watching uh, a guard like a. A Nick Kalathis, or you know, you look, you think about uh, right now some of the other guards who have, you know, who are currently playing in Europe, or you know, have played in Europe before. It's just their their ability to to you know change their speeds, to set themselves up to come off the screen successfully, you know, and to be able to find the open open player. Here, just a, a quick variation. You know, they have the pen down on the opposite side of the floor uh, while they have the the ball screen action occurring. They go under automatic rescreen, uh, which is uh, taught by just about every professional team in Europe. Uh, just a good read and attack there. Good read in that situation with the defender going under and gets low. Screeners, defenders low. And he pulls up for the shot. So now we're here. Now we'll have horns four. And this is just a, a hit. Get the ball back right into the ball screen. Pick your pop action. Really good action, especially when you have a big that can shoot it. Uh, 15 and it's just your one five pick and roll. Pretty basic action in, out of horns. Probably, I'd say probably the base action. It's just your basic um, just pick and roll action out of horns here. Here he gets it back right into the ball screen. Delivering the pass on time, on target. Backdoor cut, you know, just a just a basic burn action here with the player out of the corner. Defender loses vision. Hard cut to the rim. Your Nick puts it ahead, and all he's got to do is run into it and put it up for the layup.
Now we've got an action for a really good big that can shoot the ball, coming off the double drag with the uh, screener setting in the first screen, and now coming back and getting a, a, a pin down uh, from the second ball screener. You know, very similar to action that uh, Oklahoma City would run back in the day for Kevin Durant. Good wreath there, curled it instead of popping out, attacked, and then found the open man. Now, Double Flare, this is a set that I remember um, Chavi running back in 2007-2008 when he was at uh, Barcelona. And uh, this is one of the plays that I, I did steal from him at the time. And, you know, one of the things that you notice is that these flare screens are being set, you know, around the free throw line extended. That gives the cutter enough space to catch it um, so that, you know, if they don't have a catch and shoot, they can get into a, there's an angle in order to drive to the basket. this also allows for the screener to slip to the basket if they're open it just creates good spacing to uh, be able to catch and uh, attack off the dribble if the shot's not there Here we have probably the, one of the most popular actions, I'd say, in the last least, I'd say last four or five years, and that's, uh, that's a Spain pick and roll. You're running it from the side, from a side pick and roll situation, and you'll see it also, of course, with a, with a middle pick and roll. Again, on time, on target, the pass. Same action, They're just exchanging out with their guards, crossing over. Okay, beer slip now, uh, a, a popular action, you know, that we've seen more of. Really good counter based on how the screener or the screener's defender is going to guard that, that veer action. Nice read by the cutter there in that situation, curling it, then, then hitting the open man. You know, one of the things I like about that action is what you just saw there. He was able to drive and get into the lane 
because the other four players are involved in screening action, so their defenders are not able to help uh, in that one-on-one situation. Nice rejection. Andrea does not look happy there. Chavi looks happy. Love it. Okay, same action. Same action. Now the uh, the cutters are basically crossing underneath. So basically a floppy action um, in order to uh, set it up. Guard post-up action, something that uh, I think coaches should do more of, is uh, being able to post up your guards. Uh, just allows you to basically flatten the defense. You put a good playmaker you know, near the basket that can either attack a mismatch or with movement and screening actions, you can find open cutters and get the defense flattened and get the ball back out to the, you know, to the three, and now you can attack closeouts. Starts to look like a flex action. And it gets into a post up here. Again, just kicking out, finding an open man. Dribble handoff into the ball screen. What you see a lot, you know, a lot of teams doing this is that it now basically creates a, you're changing sides of, obviously you're changing sides of the floor, but you're also shifting the defense and putting different people in a position to have to make a decision. You know, do they help on the tag? Or do they stay in hold based on their, their matchup? You know, as you, if you watch a lot of European teams and really NBA teams at this point, almost every pick and roll action is designed to create a single side uh, situation. And if you'll notice in this clip, you know, Kalathis will either stay in the corner after handing off, sometimes he'll empty to the opposite side, thereby creating an empty, empty side pick and roll action which, you know, you could run with a big that can pick and pop versus, you know, picking and rolling. Nice read there. Help came from the Help came from the corner, which is usually a big no-no. And uh, Nick finds the open player. Nice read here. Skip the ball across. Again, who's helping on the who's helping on the roller? Pretty pretty basic. Pick and roll basketball here being executed by uh, Panathinaikos. Again, anytime the defender goes under, it's an automatic rescreen.
nice option with a big that can shoot from outside or you could even put a guard up in the uh, elbow area and then pick four. Here just a quick pin down. You'll see a lot of teams just call this a point action where they're just pointing to the shooter that they want to go to and, and then just get that quick pin down action. Basically just switching sides, getting into a basically in, in essence a spread pick and roll with your with your big uh, lifted up in that situation and, and running to a single side. Nice slip, tax gets a burn with the uh, defender looking at the penetration. 